Hello and welcome to One Cool Thing, PC Mag's daily show where we show you one cool thing which we are testing out here in the PC Mag Labs. I'm Sasha Segan, this is Tom Brandt. If you are watching us live on Facebook, welcome! It's 10 a.m. Eastern on a weekday and we welcome your questions and comments. Uh, please put them in the comments section. Social Pete here will read them out to us and we will have a discussion. If you are watching us later on YouTube, please like and subscribe. We have a new One Cool Thing every weekday here on the PC Mag channel. Uh, today's cool thing is what I've been joking is the most frequently updated laptop that we see at PC yep. Mag, which is next, next, next. Right, which is the Dell XPS 13. We see a new Dell XPS 13 probably once every six months, right? Yeah, basically they are the opposite of you can't mess with a good thing. They want to continually, continuously tinker with a good thing, and it is a really good thing. We gave this an editor's choice because it is. Currently, until they come out with a new one or someone else does better, the best ultra portable that you can buy. And so this Dell XPS 13 9370 that just came out uh, is uh, is this gorgeous, super slim, ultra portable. Uh, let's talk about let's 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 talk about the base price. Let's talk about the price for this model okay. and talk about what it can do. Well, so the main th one of the things that you're paying for on this upgraded model, which costs two thousand dollars is uh, this rose gold finish. It's brand new. The combination of rose gold and white is brand new uh, for the 9370 version of the XPS 13. Uh, and that's because they probably thought that people want uh, something that looks like a smartphone. Um, but uh, so that costs $50 extra. The rest of the increase from our $2,000 model over the $1,000 base price. It's a large smartphone. <laughs> it's, a little, it's a little awkward as a smartphone. Yeah, but I, I, I see now, it in you, terms of the colors. You now. should use it as a, a not. A, it's not a clamshell smartphone. Oh, oh, maybe it's maybe it's. it's, it's I, I don't know if anyone who's watching remembers side talking. Yeah, it's like yeah. like that. Yeah, or, like this. Or even better, uh -huh. like this. You could actually use it as a clamshell, like like the razor, like like this. Oh, okay. You know, okay. like this is the, okay. the microphone. <laughs> okay, we're, we're, we're getting pretty far afield okay. here, but so yeah, so thousand dollars base price, mm. two thousand dollars for this model. That's a lot of money. Um, it's probably one of the highest price uh, ultra portals that we've given an editor's choice to, um, because this is a, such a mainstream thing. I mean, this this really is something that if you were looking for a, a, a laptop to do pretty much anything you want other than really intensive tasks, this is is, is it. So inside the, now we're going to be talking about the $2,000 model. The $1,000 model is significantly specced down and you can see the difference yeah. in our review on PCMag.com, but this is the model we tested. Inside this $2,000 model, we have an 8th gen Core i7. What mm -hmm. else is going on in here? We have 16 gigabytes of memory and uh, a 512 gigabyte SSD. Uh, which is good, but if you wanted an equivalently priced Lenovo um, uh, or even even Apple MacBook Pro, it might be slightly less. Um, the only option that we don't have on here is the one terabyte SSD, which which currently bumps it up by an additional four hundred dollars. So now, what's going on with this screen? How big is it? Yes. Uh, how how beautiful is it? So what they've done is they've actually slimmed down for this version of the XPS 13, which is only uh, the, the the previous version came out in last fall. So there's really not that much time as advanced. What they've done is they've slimmed it down, so it's it's thinner and smaller even than its predecessor, but it still has the 13-inch screen. So that means that this bezel here is incredibly thin. Dell kind of pioneered this thin bezel on laptops with the XPS 13 a few years ago, and they're doubling down consistently. Um, so they've slimmed it down, but they've kept the weight the same. It's still about 2.6 pounds. Let's take a question. How's the touchpad? Yeah, so the touchpad um, is good for a Windows laptop. And I will explain what that means by saying that I think that all the, the best touchpad you can buy is on a MacBook Pro or a MacBook. Um, that's because it has a haptic feedback and it's a glass uh, touchpad design where the entire touchpad is clickable. There is no Windows laptop that I've ever seen that comes close to that. That said, this is one of the better ones because um, it's, it's extremely clickable in all areas, even though it's a physical design. So you can click it at the top, you can click it at the bottom, um, it still works the same. How about battery life? Yes, yeah, so battery life, let's go ahead and take a look here at our review, mm -hmm. uh, where we list all of the specs. Um, 
uh, and we see that it got nine hours and a half, okay. which is good. Um, but the reason that it didn't get the, the reason that it didn't get quite as good as some of the best ones on here is because it has a 4K display. Oh, uh, okay. And so that 4K display really eats up a bunch of battery, battery mm -hmm. life. As you can see here on the chart, it says 4K on it. Um, the, yeah, the screen, the, the, that additional number of pixels is one of the key problems with battery life. Um, but that said, it's, it's still excellent. And if you want that 4K display, there isn't any other laptop that you can get that like manages to circumvent that. Yeah, issue. it makes it so <laughs> gorgeously sharp yeah. too. Now, right. let, me walk, let me walk through some of the ports here. Um, on the side here, we have, uh, we have two USB-C Thunderbolts, one with power delivery and what appears to be a locking port. Um, yep, little square thing. Yep. Um, then on the other side, um, you've got a micro SD card slot. Uh, another USB-C with display port, uh, headphone jack. So this is a pure USB-C build here. There's yeah. no USB-A's. Yep, that's correct. Okay. Um, and that's something that, again, you'll find on some competitors. Uh, the most obvious of which are the, is the MacBook and the MacBook Pro. Um, you can obviously buy adapters or uh, live a dongle life, mm -hmm. as we frequently demonstrate when we when we talk about these laptops. Um, but uh, in general, the fact that it has um, Display Port out, you know, that should give you everything that you need, is, assuming yeah. you're willing to spend extra on dongles. And there's Thunderbolt, too. Yeah, now, uh, these cameras being down here, does that give you a nostril cam problem? Yeah, so it's interesting. It does. It definitely does. There, the camera should be, in my opinion, up at the top, where the camera has been for a decade or so, looking straight at you when you are typing. Because um, if you're video conferencing, right, you know, you, you, you're going to see, and you're typing while you're doing it, because the camera is down here below the Dell logo, you're gonna see not only uh, up your nose, <laughs> right, if the screen's angled like this, but you're also gonna see your knuckles. Yeah, and it's, <laughs> and it's an unattractive look on the jowls. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. This is, is yeah. really, some people call it a nostril cam, uh, you know, you might call it a jowl cam, actually, or a knuckle cam. Um, it's not quite as bad as some other designs that we've seen. Huawei actually updated the MateBook X Pro to put the key, to put the, camera in the keyboard. I love that, it's insane. <laughs> Which, and we haven't reviewed that laptop yet, but we will in the coming months, and that, that really is problematic. Um, but there is no alternative if you want such a thin bezel. You cannot mm -hmm. put, until they figure out how to put a, a, a camera in the screen, mm -hmm. you cannot fit a camera here at the top. So that's that's the price that you pay for such a thin border. Okay, let's, uh, let's look some more at these benchmarks. Now we see with uh, now now of course uh, we have a we have a eighth gen i7 here uh, running at a relatively clocked down 1.8 gigahertz because this is a you know super thin and light performance here on our benchmarks very good yeah. relative to other thin and light laptops but what is the situation and and a, and a lot of people are going to be uh, curious and concerned uh, over uh, graphics performance. Yeah, um, so what they've done with graphics with the eighth generation processor, they've they've updated the integrated graphics that's built onto the CPU. So there is now what they call Intel UHD graphics, which ostensibly stands for Ultra HD. And we're driving a 4K screen here. Yeah, and it's driving a 4K screen. And so what that does is basically it shares the memory and the processing power for the graphics uh, display, things like games, uh, 3D rendering, with the main CPU, which means basically that you should not expect to play really intensive games, at hot, at, at, certainly not at 4K resolution, but probably not even in HD resolution because there, there just isn't enough uh, graphics processing power to go around. So this is your home or work, ultralight, take it with you, do your work, be social, yeah. maybe do some creative work kind of laptop. Yeah, I mean, basically look at this as you're spending uh, a bit of a premium for this amazing design, and it's gonna do anything that you want uh, up in terms of basic act activities. Typing, uh, internet browsing, um, video conferencing, even you know, editing Photoshop, uh, some, some, some you know, importing photos from your smartphone or your video camera, things like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so, w oh, we have another question out there. You said there's no HDMI on there? Correct. So, if you want to output to HDMI, what you would do is you would uh, either buy a, an adapter that goes from um, DisplayPort USB-C to HDMI, or you can also buy an actual cable yeah. that has an HDMI port on one end and a DisplayPort uh, USB-C connector on the other end. 
Yeah, at this point, we're now seeing on the market cables that connect USB-C to whatever. Yeah. So it just becomes a matter of you have to bring your own cables. Right. Those are yeah. more expensive, typically, but if you are in the market for one of those, you should look definitely look online. Do not go to your local Best Buy because if they do have it, it will be more expensive. Insanely expensive. Um, yeah. And also, you know, look buy buy it from Amazon or Mono Price is my favorite. That way, you know you're getting good quality. So two thousand dollars. We're calling it our editor's our editor's choice for thin lights. Uh, this is the best ultra portable. Ultra editor's portable. choice for ultra portable. Yes. Okay, so it's so, so it's our editor's <laughs> thin light. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Another word for that's, it. That's that's <laughs> that's my my old phrasing. At least yes. I'm not calling it an ultra See, book. Ultra portable. This is what um, this is what the manufacturer wants right, you to call it. Right. Thin lights, fine too, but ultra is really. Uh... It's more ultra, <laughs> absolutely. Um, and so and so, it's that over. We're choosing it over the HPs, over yeah. the Razer Blade Stealth, over the MacBook. Now we need to talk. I've ta been talking a lot about the MacBooks and MacBook Pros, right? But what, what we need to really mention is the HP Spectre 13. Yes. Because the HP Spectre 13 came out right before for the previous version of this laptop, and it had rose gold options mm -hmm. with Snow White. So, you know, uh, inquiring minds might want to know what the Dell designers were thinking when, when they saw that. That laptop, to me, the HP Spectre 13, is even more visually impressive than this. Uh, it's even thinner, mm -hmm. uh, it weighs even less, um, and uh, you can check out the comparison in the review, but to me that, um, with the exception of its horrendous touchpad. I was going to say, <laughs> the deal breaker for me on the yeah. Spectre 13 is that the touchpad makes me want to kill myself. Right, um, with, with, that, with that exception, uh, it, uh, you know, I mean, it is certainly worth a look. It didn't get the editor's choice because of that touchpad. It is really, truly awful touchpad. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's like the it's like the uh, MacBook butterfly keyboard. Yeah, so yeah, we didn't talk about the keyboard. This this <laughs> this keyboard's fine. Um, Sasha here likes would like it better. No, no, than I, the, the, I, yeah, the I like it. Pro. I like this keyboard. But you would like anything better than it's the MacBook bouncy. Pro. It's <laughs> bouncy. Yeah. So um, yeah, but basically the the HP Spectre 13, I think, really is. The closest competition for this specific model with the rose with the rose gold and the white. Um, you, like I said, the base model is black. But, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, great. So uh, Dell XPS thirteen ninety three seventy, the one that just came out, not the one that came out six months ago, which is probably no, less still than on the six market. Ago. It was right, like which November. Is probably <laughs> still on the market everywhere. <laughs> yep. Look for that ninety three seventy. It is our four point five star editor's choice for ultra portables. Um, the full review is up on PCMag.com. Thank you all for watching. This has been one cool thing. If you are on Facebook, please return at 10 a.m. tomorrow. We will have another cool thing. If you are on YouTube, check back every day. We have another cool thing on our uh, YouTube page every day. Thanks a lot.